Hey everybody, this is part one of a multi-video series that I'm doing called How to Use Photoshop to Create RPG Maps for Your Virtual Tabletop Gaming Needs. I'm going to be listing out all of my favorite tips and tricks and hopefully uh, give you everything that you need to learn to start creating maps for your games in Photoshop. Let's not hesitate anymore. Let's go ahead and get started. You, of course, are watching The Dungeon Geek. Welcome, part number one. Now before we begin designing, we have to learn our fundamentals. These are very important things, I believe, that help me save time when I'm designing dungeons. So I'm gonna pass these little tips on to you and hopefully they too will save you time and frustration moving forward with your own personal designs. So number one here is concept. Understand your concept before you start designing. This is gonna save you a ton of time. Uh, there are several ways that you can get your concepts sort of uh, more concrete. One of the ways that I like to do it is I like to take old modules or adventure paths from really any game where the map is already kind of sketched out for me and there are descriptions maybe they're listed alphabetically or numerically that describe what each room is going to contain what the surfaces are made out of what kind of monsters maybe live there the ecology of the place anything that's going to allow me a road map to select textures and dungeon props that's all going to save me time in the long road going into a concept blind not knowing what you're creating and just kind of making it up on the fly could be fun for some of you but in the essence of time savings, if you're going to spend hours creating maps, knowing your concept through and through before you begin is going to be the biggest, best tip that I can possibly give you right off the bat. Tip number two is file organization. It pays to be organized. So I will show you here real quickly uh, my particular uh, setup that I have here. This is just an example of how I uh, organize my RPG stuff. So let's go ahead and switch on over to this view here. And as you can see, this is just a master folder. So create a master folder. Uh, I've titled this one, My RPG Maps. And then within this, create subfolders, right? So I've got a subfolder for dungeon props. These are uh, got subfolders inside of it, you know, that contain things like critters or debris or furniture or uh, prison elements. Anything that I can help, you know, recall and organize files here is going to help me in the long run. I've also created a map here called Final Maps. This is anything that I'd upload to the virtual tabletop uh, setting. Photoshop brushes, those are uh, customized brushes that I can keep saved in there in their, uh, their small formats, uh, their Photoshop formats, so that I'm able to then load in brushes and not have, you know, my palette overwhelmed with custom brushes all the time. I could always reset it and load them in later. Uh, the Photoshop map documents, these are probably going to be a majority of PSD documents or PSB if they're very large files. I doubt they'll get that big though unless you're designing for print. Uh, Photoshop textures, this is uh, a really good place to keep all of your texture packs that you create using your texture library. So. Uh, the texture library is going to be where you save all of your raw image documents that you find from your searches online. And so you can organize them whatever you feel is best. Typically I do the things like sand or soil or water or pavement, uh, special effects, things of that nature so that I can keep all of my textures organized here within my computer. It's very important to save pretty much everything that you download because you never know whenever, uh, you know, I don't know, your internet's going to shut off or you're just going to need to have something. You know you've got a file on hand, but you can't remember where you put it. Stay organized. You'll never regret it. Number three file sourcing or image sourcing. Now this is going to be a process where you are going to take your newly created organized file structures, right? We were organized, aren't we? And you're going to go onto Google searches and you're going to go to Pinterest or, you know, you're going to go to deviant art or CG textures or royalty free textures. And you're just going to Google search any type of texture or dungeon object or prop that you're going to want to put into your map and you're going to organize all of these files inside of your folders and once you have all of the textures that your sort of your roadmap concept has requested that you have 
then you're going to be ready to start designing. All right, so once you have your textures in your library and everything's organized, one of the things when you start designing that you're gonna to need to know how to do is how to create uh, Photoshop pattern libraries for yourself. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is just go ahead and open up Photoshop, and we're just taking a look at the main screen here. We don't have any files opened up, and just open up any of the textures that you've downloaded here. I have got a, a four by four a seamless JPEG of a stone texture that I have found online. And so once you have this open, in order to create a pattern layer, you wanna go over to edit, and you need to make sure that you go down to define pattern. And then you can go ahead and give this thing a name. Let's go ahead and call this stone 001, in case we have multiple iterations of stone later on, and just go ahead and hit okay. And this is gonna be put into your pattern folder. So in order to figure out what exactly this does, let's go ahead and uh, start this thing over. Let's hit Shift plus F5, and then let's fill this with black. And once we've filled this with black here, we're gonna go down to our uh, layer. We're gonna click drag the background layer down to the new layer button, which is here in the bottom right next to the trash bin. And then we are going to see our duplicated layer appear up top in the layer field. Uh, go ahead, once this new background copy is selected, make sure that it's highlighted. Go down to the Effects tab, open that up, and then go to Pattern Overlay. Here there is a drop-down menu in the Pattern Overlays that are going to allow you to apply any pattern that you've installed in Photoshop and then scale it uh, in size. Uh, so right now, here's our pattern that we just had. Uh, and right now it is at 68% to scale. If we put it at 100%, it, it shows up exactly as we had it prior. Uh, if we put it at 25%, and you're beginning to see here the repetitive pattern that it creates whenever it is scaled down. Uh, we'll talk about how to uh, hide this or remove this later on. But one of the things that I can offer you as a tip here while we're talking about patterns and overlay, try to keep things within the 25% incremental uh, scales. They just show up a little sharper and a little crisper. So 25% is going to look good. 50% is going to look good. 200% is going to look okay. You start to degrade once you increase beyond 100%. Uh, so the quality will suffer. But 25, 50, 100, those are good numbers to keep your image nice and crisp. Hey, another thing that you may need to do while you're working in Photoshop is create a custom brush. We've all seen the uh, myriad of special brushes that are in the brush tab. Uh, there's various different shapes and each of them, you know, do you know, their own little fun, uh, magical things. Uh, but you might need to create something custom. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is create a... Uh, a brush that allows me to kind of etch out cavern walls uh, which uh, show up as you know distressed and uneven and a way to do that here is uh, let's uh, start with a, a new document here let's hit file new and then let's work in pixels we're gonna set up a new document make sure you have it set to pixels let's do 2000 by 2000 pixels because that's a pretty large brush with a white background set to our RGB color mode and then in here, we're gonna grab our marquee tool, the lasso tool, and then we're going to just kind of just make a shape here, and it doesn't have to be straight. There can be curves, there can be points, but kind of like we're making a, a boulder of sorts. Uh, and then just encircle that. And if there's any little extra pieces here that have not been marqueed, go ahead and hold shift, and then add to that selection a bit, and then release. And then while that selection is there, you can hit, hit Shift F5 again and fill that with black. So this is essentially what a brush would look like right now. Uh, in order to make it an active brush, you just go up to Edit, and then you would go to Define Brush Preset. And then you can go ahead and then give this brush a name. We'll call this uh, Rock Brush. All right, now once you have your new rock brush created, let me show you quickly uh, some fun things that you can do with it here inside of Photoshop. This is especially good for doing like cavern passages, just the, the very rough uh, sketches of them. Uh, just start with a white background here. Grab your brush, uh, which should be at the very bottom here, uh, and then uh, go ahead and scale that down to a reasonable size. Uh, we're gonna do about 250 pixels here. And then if you go to uh, your brush settings, which should be here adjacent to your brush menu, go down and click yes on shape dynamics and then go over to size jitter and then increase that maybe 10% and then angle jitter and then increase that maybe uh, 30%.
And so this brush is gonna increase and decrease in size every time you click, and it's gonna rotate slightly in a random direction every time you click. And this is gonna allow you to create cavern walls that seem to be naturally uneven. So just grabbing uh, a black color uh, here on our brush, we're just gonna kind of uh, roll this across, and then maybe that's the passage that you know goes straight through, and then there is another passage that heads south, and then maybe bends slightly to the southeast. And this very well could be part of a map or a map in its entirety. It depends on what scale it is it's being designed. This is where you're going to start. Uh, but understanding how to create brushes, understanding how to create patterns using textures is very important. It's going to streamline our processes when we start designing next time on part two. And that's pretty much it for today. If you have any questions about uh, anything that we've covered, any of these basic fundamental type things, please leave comments in the section below and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. I know uh, after doing something for so many years, it's possible that you know I've left some steps out or I've skipped over some things or maybe I've gone too fast or, or wasn't clear in my descriptions. Uh, but again, Part two is going to be coming soon. We're actually going to start designing. We're going to learn how to set up files for your virtual tabletop. We're going to learn about layer masking and a couple other fun things. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. This has been The Dungeon Geek.